So guys, today we are continuing categorizing perfumes from my collection and we are doing that by countries in this video because this is another episode from the series in which I share with you my most favorite brands that are all based in the same country. And the first episode was dedicated to American perfumery and in case you missed it, definitely check it out in order to find out about super cool indie and niche American based brands. The link is going to be on the screen and down below in the description box for you, where you will also find more information about brands we'll be discussing in today's video, which you've probably already guessed by my hoodie, the Oxford hoodie that I actually purchased in Oxford, uh, that was one of the major traveling experiences for me. It's time to talk about UK-based niche and indie brands and um, I definitely want to visit a lot of uh, cities in Great Britain although I've only been to London twice and I just love the city with super cool people and it's just amazing I wish I could live there but anyway you guys if you know cool UK based brands comment them down below and while you are doing so I'll be sharing with you top 10 plus of mine and also reviewing for you two of my most favorite per perfumes from each so I know this is going to be a long video because this is not my first take so grab yourself something delicious to eat drink have a snack and take notes because this is going to be a chatty informative and very very long video and to find out about amazing artistic UK based brands, just keep on watching this video. So guys, welcome back. I'm really excited to complete this series for this year with a top list of UK based brands because I find um, England has amazing history with perfumes when it comes to classic niche or artistic and creative fragrances. You can find all of that in that country and that's where I wanted to know which brands uh, from UK you like. And um, while you're letting me know that, I'm getting started with one of my absolute major favorites that um, I experienced for myself and discovered a couple of years ago. And this is um, the brand that was founded by a multi-faceted, multi multi-artist Sarah Baker. Sarah Baker Perfumes was um, her another artistic project that is super successful and I'm a big fan of it but originally Sarah is actually from San Francisco where she studied fine art and uh, she collaborated with different artists including Versace and worked on different projects and then developed her perfume line. Originally it consisted out of five perfumes. This is uh, my first love leopard with this animalic leopard print on a bottle that smells exactly like spicy sexy rose and then she expanded the line kind of changed the design which I will show you this is the newer line and uh, I really like this bottle because it's the same size as the cap super cool and by the way this uh, color reference goes to the golden gate bridge and childhood memories of a 70s graphic design this optimistic logo is everything I'm, I'm just like so into it very cute and it's also cool that sarah puts names of uh, perfumes and noses behind them on a bottle right away and this one Atlant or Atlanta was composed by Sarah McCartney who we will talk about in this video but first let me tell you about this fragrance that I don't really mention that often on my channel probably because it's from my least favorite genres aquatics but it's extremely atmospheric it really transports you to the seaside and you can smell the salty air the stormy breeze that comes out of it uh, the seaweed and although it's so aquatic and watery it's also sparkling and shimmery and just a must-have for the lovers of clean 
watery fragrances with the aroma of the ocean. Another cool fact about this perfume is that I've noticed that people react really positively to it. For example, I helped Sarah at the major perfume exhibition Exons introducing random people to her collection and I noticed that everyone, men and women, really loves Atlante and even my stepbrother Edwin, who you might remember from previous videos, after smelling the entire collection was wowed only by Atlant, or Atlant, which was also nominated for Art No Faction Awards. So that's definitely something safe to buy from Sarah Baker, but I am here to tell you about perfume masterpiece that is true wow in a bottle and that's jungle jezebel that i have in a limited edition bottle you can definitely get it in a general one that looks like that and uh, with it a very creative perfume miguel matos debuted and in my opinion it was very brave of sarah and miguel to release such a bombastic fragrance opinions on which are very polarizing but although even i didn't fall in love with it right at first sniff. Now I consider it a one-of-a-kind perfume that is just truly mind-blowing because it opens up with this bubblegummy fruity scent and you're like, what? It's so bombastic and fun, but then some sensuous, exotic flowers join the party and create this tropical sensation and you notice the animalic thing going on, which comes because of civet that provides sexiness to this fragrance and just this carnal feel in combination with fruits and um, tropical flowers it's something exceptional and vetiver rolls the dry down so i gotta be honest with you people love it on me my mom wanted to steal it benny adores it and uh, it's for those who are experienced with perfumes and are bored of everything and want something wow truly exciting with amazing sillage in performance as all sarah baker perfumes it's very long-lasting because uh, they have uh, extrait de parfum concentration, highest concentration ever. So if you're looking for extremely long-lasting perfumes, this is definitely the brand for you. There are more perfumes to choose from, but I also want to cheat and include the third fragrance from this brand that is from the newer line called S. Baker, that I'll be soon reviewing in another video. But I was particularly waiting for this fragrance, Bascool, and um, the different the difference between this line and the rest is that it has Eau de Parfum concentration, so these fragrances are still strong, but they kind of project more and they are sort of fresher in a way, and uh, the design is slightly different too, but other than that, Bascul is just this extraordinary work that was inspired by the princess who lives nowadays, is extremely elegant and she rides horses professionally, which is so mind-blowing. And so is this fragrance that definitely takes you on a journey. And uh, it's very exciting to wear it because first, when you spray it on, it opens with this green scent and you're kind of like walking on a meadow, getting closer to the horse seal and then you're getting on the horse and you ride it and you smell animalic vibe and leather and suddenly you are next to the peach tree. So there is peach note in there and it's this elegant leather that is like knee shaker in a bottle that's just a month of sexiness that comes out of it is a norm. So I highly recommend it for everyone who loves leathery perfumes and Sarah Baker in general because she really pays attention to all the details. She collaborates with different perfumers and I wish her a lot of success. Check out her official website. It looks super cool. All the helpful links are below and if you have any experience with this brand i'm sure it's going to be helpful for everyone so speaking of uh, british perfumery and just indie perfumery overall there is no way to come around sarah mccartney who is a very talented lady you know she's a musician she's good at math she's a writer she worked for lush and around 10 years ago she started her own indie line that is doing extremely well and not only she collaborates with other brands she also has uh, this uh, line of hers and she creates very adventurous fragrances and is kind of like a driving force for indie movement and um, although my number one from her is definitely Oh My Soul, which is a perfume masterpiece uh, once again, we'll be discussing a lot of those in this video because I chose best of the best and uh, it basically smells like a group hug in a bottle but I've already mentioned it a lot of times on my channel so I want to highlight for you two other of my favorites. 
so one of them is meet me on the corner perfume that sarah worked on her mind um on a couple of years and uh, it was inspired by that time when you used to arrange meetings with your friend uh, and then wait for for them outside because there were no phones back, uh, back in late 70s to change uh, the meeting and uh, so it was inspired by that time and perfumes Chypress mainly that were worn back then particularly Sarah's favorite Diorella from Dior and the thing is although it's a Chypress it's extremely modern and wearable it doesn't have that vintage vibe whatsoever and it has something very unique about it which I exactly know what it is actually the citrus part of this perfume is huge and if you know me, I'm not the biggest fan of citrusy fragrances, but the story is different with Meet Me on the Corner because for it, Sarah used this new material called Mandora that I don't know if any other brand has used yet. And it's very special. It's kind of like a blend of orange and mandarin. And it's just so bright and juicy and fun and very enjoyable fragrance overall. Very modern smelling and it tells you a story as you wear it. Probably that is why it's so exciting for me personally. The second um, pick of mine is Sex Goddess, which is one of my most worn perfumes ever that I purchased specifically to wear at night when I'm alone in my bed, as the majority of times. And uh, in my opinion, Sarah is the best person at Violet Fruity Perfumes, which this fragrance is all about because it's powdery, almost candy-like, extremely chic and uh, it's very soothing, comforting, fun, enjoyable, delicious, mouth-watering, amazing, and she has a lot of violety, fruity perfumes in her range. This is one of my personal favorites. And to be honest with you, after DSH, this is the second brand I own most bottles of. So if uh, you would like to see 4000 Heritage Tuesdays, um, how spotlight, what's best of the best, my favorites, definitely thumbs up this video. And of course, if you have any experience or favorites, comment them below. But what I recommend you is definitely to get a sample pack of these adventurous perfumes. And I'm sure there is going to be something for everyone with what you can fall in love with. Because although these are creative, these are also very wearable and fairly priced fragrances. Next brand we are going to talk about is Anisha One Memoirs London that um, creates fragrances in such huge cool bottles and I have two to discuss one of which is Luxuria and it smells like a very likable mass appealing feminine perfume kind of like in angelic noir style but even sweeter and more sugary and uh, people have amazing reaction uh, on it, so Luxuria is something wearable for ladies who like sweet fragrances. I personally really love Tristia because it has almost like an animalic twist to it with civet and exciting oud. It used to be my go to night out fragrance, you know, back then in the time when we had occasions to go out to at night. and. People love it, although it's animalic, it's not scary, so if you're looking for something extra sexy, but at the same time, you know, still not over the top, I recommend you this one, and there are more fragrances to choose from this very niche smelling, not too creative, but safe brand, and if you want more information, you can find it on the official website, and down below you'll also find the link to my previous house overview. Ooh, you guys, this next brand is something truly exceptional, and it was founded by Iglia Veitkevis. I'm very sorry if I'm mispronouncing names in this video, that's the worst thing to do, but please don't mind my pronunciation or mispronunciation. And she's actually an independent artisan perfumer with a qualification from Grasse Institute of Perfumery in France. And she also has a master degree in Slavic languages and background of aromatherapy. And I find it's interesting that her fragrances smell unlike anything else, but at the same time, very classy. And so I'm here to mention two of my favorites, one of which is Probably major perfume surprise for me personally that is called Pergola and it's a surprise because it's kind of fragrance I typically wouldn't like because it is very very green and you know green is not safe territory for me to be in when it comes to perfumes and everything about this fragrance is green I mean like there are a lot of different green notes narcissus hyacinth tuberose galbanum myrtle little of the wall violet leaf grass ginger ivy violet leaf ylang ylang moss and vetiver and so much more um, you notice right and you smell it and it's very green 
It's like you're in a leafy forest. It's very leafy, mossy, youthful, springy, and I love it. That was the first green perfume I fell in love with, and it remains my favorite green fragrance that is super strong. And I think if you like green perfumes, you will be obsessed with it. Next favorite is St. Paul's, which is one of the biggest perfume mysteries to me, because although I could tell you about the notes, I won't, because I can't pinpoint them. So it's not about the notes at all. It's about um, the mystery and uh, mature very classy and chic perfumery to me personally, and this fragrance was inspired by St. Paul's Cathedral in London, which is just amazing, and it's dark shadows and extravaganza and baroque style. Uh, everything is captured in this essence that is like a perfume experience. Experience. You wear it on the most special occasion ever because you want to feel confident and you just want the best fragrance ever. So this is a very unique Chipra and I'm head over heels about it. Every time I smell these fragrances I feel at exaltated, which is kind of like um, the idea of this brand. So highly, highly, highly recommend you to check it out. Their perfumes are ethical. Uh, this is a transparent brand uh, that really cares about um, creative a point of, of view and also, you know, um, you getting the highest quality. So I can only recommend you to check out the entire line and those are my two favorites. So you know guys, what I really love about niche and indie perfumery, that it has a purpose and the majority of times interesting concepts and uh, that's exactly what next brand is about that is called Galavant and all of their fragrances uh, captures uh, the um, spirit of cities uh, all around the world and so I have two favorites to share with you although I really like the majority of Galavant perfumes uh, and this is easily one of the most complimented brands from my collection, which is cool because perfumes on their own are very interesting and unique, but mass appealing. And I want to begin with uh, the first fragrance I loved from it called Brooklyn, because this is basically the happiest perfume ever that impressed me very much because it is about a citrusy note. And once again, I'm not the biggest fan of citruses, but this is not that you know, sour and kind of like citrus, citrus. It's a creamy orange. It's almost candy-like, but still orangey. And it just smells like a happy time, warm day that you're spending in the neighborhood, just enjoying yourself and um, company of your friends. Happy fragrance in the bottle that creates this amazing atmosphere and enchants the mood. I love it, people love it and ask me what I'm wearing when I wear Brooklyn. Another favorite is Amsterdam because, well, first of all, it doesn't smell like the real city on each street of which you smell Mariana that gives me headache. It's not like that. It's super comforting and cozy, warm and enveloping. It's like hugging someone who you really, really love, and it has this abstract note of tulip that I really enjoy. So if you are looking for something that will be really soothing, that's Amsterdam. If you're looking for something uh, that is super happy, that's Brooklyn. And if you're looking for something that you can gallivant while you're gallivanting through a new city, well, just check out this very cool brand that creates such travel-friendly fragrances you can take with you everywhere you go. And speaking of UK-based brands, Abdul Karim al France is definitely the one that immediately comes on my mind, and it was founded by Anthony Marmin, whose inspiration basically comes from Middle Eastern perfumery, and although his fragrances have that opulence of Oriental fragrances, they are less heavy than typical Middle Eastern fragrances, and that is what I love about them so much. They are also pure oils, so if you don't like alcohol in your fragrances, this is definitely the brand you really want to check out that also has this classical French structure. And if you like notes like amber, musk and um, oud, this is the line for you. But I'm here to share with you, of course, my favorites. And one of them is Bint al Ferranci, royal violet fragrance with oud that I've been looking for a long, long time. And it's just amazing how luxurious this application is. And uh, the oils are very moisturizing, you can just dot them everywhere 
uh, and um, enjoy throughout the day. Hubby Butty is a must try for all who are looking for the perfect mask fragrance. It's like your second skin, slightly sweetened with this um, amazing um, sensuous effect and uh, perfect for men and women, kind of like this um, attractive scent of a human body. So I'm a big fan of this one personally, but there are so many more to find on the official website. And uh, these fragrances are about, you know, high quality materials, about interesting concepts, about um, sort of creating um, and um, um, going beyond boundaries, but at the same time, not over the top. So I am a big, big fan of Anthony's work and I highly recommend to everyone who likes Middle Eastern fragrances or is looking for something in that style for a fair price. So next brand, also London-based, is Pana London. And there are two fragrances I will tell you about. One of which I've already mentioned a thousand times on my channel, but oh my god, here we go again. Pink Champagne Truffle is for the lovers of chocolate fragrances. This is most realistic chocolate in a bottle. I don't know what's going on with my camera. <laughs> so sorry if I'm out of focus. It smells like bitter chocolate with red berries and alcohol. Boozy, sweet, delicious. You don't even need to eat alcohol wearing this perfume. Everyone will be attracted to you because it's the scent of chocolate and it's very, very like delicious gourmand mouth watering. Best thing you can get with chocolate is this. But if you are interested in more recommendations, I have a top list dedicated to the note of chocolate. And their next perfume is also about one of my most favorite notes, Neroli, called Neroli Woods, in such a pretty bottle, shiny and sparkling. Well, this, my dear friends, is sort of uh, the sexiest, clean and fresh fragrance that I have a feeling has some pheromones going on because although it's about this citrus floral note neroli that I also have uh, a top list dedicated to, cedar, amber and musk, it's rather about clean skin that attracts, attracts and attracts and you can't really resist. So if you're looking for something extremely wearable, for something that people will be drawn to like crazy, that is it. I find it's so wearable for men and women. Just, you know, when you're on a go and you want to smell clean, refreshing, pleasant, mass appealing, highly recommend you that one. And you can look into the line of Pana London fragrances. They create uh, artistic perfumes that are very long lasting. Uh, they have a very innovative fragrance uh, that has cooling effect, great for the summertime. So their official website is of course linked below. And if you need more information, let me know. Speaking about um, UK based brands and British perfumery, Jo Malone is definitely one of the most well-known ones that doesn't need an introduction and it used to be an indie one it's not anymore but I'm still here to mention two of my favorites from it one of which is a bestseller that has been going on for a long time and another one is a new edition let's get started with red roses cologne that uh, smells exactly like a tea rose that is growing on a bush in your garden with this amazing sweet honey note and citrus element. It's one of the most long-lasting Jo Malone's perfumes and it is very realistic rosy. So if you like rose, I highly recommend you this one. It smells very, you know, like elegant, classy, simple and very pleasant to wear. You can layer it with any fragrance, honestly, if you want to have it like a rose um, background. Um, all Jo Malone's perfumes are layerable. If you like simple fragrances, this is the brand for you. If you like lighter perfumes, this is the brand for you. But they have this absolute collection that hits on the niche depth. And my favorite is definitely Gardenia and Oud that was this year's release, this year's blend by, this year's birthday gift. And uh, gotta be honest with you, although I don't think that they put in the um, natural Oud in here, even though it's synthetic, it's one of the best Oudi perfumes because it's not sticky, overwhelming and um, intense. It smells very refined and in the combination with um, 
white flowers. I would say that this is one of the sexiest woody perfumes that is very easygoing and if there was a flower with a scent of wood it would smell like it. Juicy, bright, sparkling, very attractive, very like um, come to me, smell me, buy me. It smells extremely expensive as if you spent a fortune on it. It's not necessarily the most affordable perfume but in my opinion it's worth the price and so yeah those were my top picks from Jo Malone. But I find this is a well-known brand, so if you have any favorites, I would like to know about them. So guys, we've spoken about uh, traditional perfumery, about uh, perfume oils. Now uh, let's talk about attars, shall we? Because attar master Sultan Pasha lives in UK and there are so many fragrances you can choose from his catalog. There are still so many on my wish list, and not only he is uh, very talented and creates amazing attars, he's also a very humble guy with amazing sense of humor. And uh, we know each other, as I know some of uh, these brand owners and perfumers. But um, of course, I'm here to highlight two of my favorites from Sultan, one of which is probably the prettiest, most beautiful perfume that exists out there. And you know, when life is really, really hard and difficult and you don't see an escape, you smell this perfume and you're like, oh, okay, it's worth living. <laughs> Honestly, uh, I'm not exaggerating. This fragrance is uh, purple powder magic in a bottle that takes you on a journey back in time that you never want to stop. It smells slightly similar to the legendary Iris Grey from Jacques Fass, but less nostalgic and dusty, more lively, more fresh. It's honestly perfection in a bottle, one of the prettiest perfumes, the sillage of which is just out of this world, because these are attars that are highly concentrated, you just need to apply a few dots and you will smell them all day long and just be like, oh my god, I will wear it every day, because this is the prettiest perfume Ever. Just check it out, honestly, it's worth it. Uh, something very, very different is Lordeur because it smells basically like a smoky plum with tobacco, lots of spices and animalic action. So it's very smoky and interesting, kind of gourmand, uh, almost bacon-like, I don't know. I find it's very cool. Um, I think it's for those who like bold perfumes and being like, ooh, slightly crazy. Um, also, if you like tobacco, you want it to be slightly sweet and with the smoky plum note, it's amazing. But I'm pretty much sure that you guys are familiar with Sultan Pasha Tars. If not, it's definitely something you need to check out, particularly if you're in UK, get yourself samples. And if you have any favorites, you know what to do comment. So we are coming to the end and I'm here to talk about Chinois from Bedeau that was founded by Amanda Beadle who after visiting Sarah McCartney's uh, perfume workshop, yes, she teaches uh, about perfumes, created this fragrance inspired by the English wine yards in the ship process that smells mossy, green, mm, like vine, very aromatic, mm, you know, of juniper a lot and oak mass, um, it won Art and Olfaction Awards. Boom! Strike! So, although I'm a bigger fan of the rest of the line, this is something you can support a small business with. So, yeah, actually she's from London or UK and, she, no, not London, uh, Brighton if I'm not wrong, but she's moving to America. Anyway, um, this is a lovely aromatic perfume for those who like mossy fragrances, green aromatic perfumes and uh, highly recommend you to check out. Once again, support the indies. And on that note, guys, we are moving on to the next brands that I have only samples of, and one of which is Centauri Perfumes, a brand that was founded by a fellow reviewer, Peter, from the channel Fragrance View. And uh, this is basically one of most amazing berry fragrances I've ever experienced with this tartness and brightness and sparkles all over it. And although it's very mass appealing and likable and enjoyable to wear, and very mass appealing. It also has unique character, so I feel like that's what I've been desperately waiting for from major designer brands, but I think it's something that is possible only from indie ones. So if you have any experience with any other Peter's fragrances, let me know it down below in the comments. And we are moving on to the final fragrance, Bengal Rouge from the brand Papillon Artisan Perfumes, that um, I know offers great fragrances and I really want a lot of them. 
but this is for the lovers of oriental perfumes because it's a dense honey fragrance kind of labdanum like with myrrh that is very war warming and hot and oriental and very strong it stays on for days and days and days so if you know any fragrances from this brand uh, comment below your favorites but keep on your mind that uh, last two brands and many more indian niche ones you can find on the website Equation Natural, which is a niche boutique online where you can purchase fragrances from many amazing brands that I love and with my discount code you can actually save 5% off so check out the description box for more helpful information and on that note that completed this video which I sincerely hope you enjoyed watching and found helpful and if so please give it a thumbs up comment below and subscribe because that's the way you can support me and uh, enjoy this content that is free um, into which goes a lot of effort because uh, it takes time and uh, research you know to find out all about these brands to make relationship with them to experience their perfumes and inform you about something that is really worth your attention that can bring you positive energy when you will smell these perfumes and since i've noticed that the majority of my viewers are not subscribed i think it would be amazing if you could support me ring that subscription and notification bell in order to be updated about my new videos and if you have any questions left i'm here to chat with you because i'm always excited to hear from you your feedback is very important and i would like to know which of uh, mentioned brands appeal to you which ones you'll be checking out and of course if you know any others comment them down below and don't forget to follow me on my social media where i also post about perfumes and even create live unboxings inviting perfumers to them i would be also interested in hearing which next country you want me to discuss and feature in the next episode i'm in between france and italy but i would like to know what do you think and what do you want so on that note that completed this long chatty but i sincerely hope um enjoyable and helpful video and if um uh, um, you liked it please give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe share and of course stay tuned and smell good thank you so much for watching we'll see each other in my next one bye guys